Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. I got a fresh cup of coffee, so you know that means there's going to be trouble. Yeah. Today we're starting a new series of videos called the Home Lab Series. And let's get it started right now. I'm going to drink my coffee. So Windows Home Lab, yeah, for those of you out there who want to practice and play around with Microsoft and get familiar with domain controllers and what they do and how they do it and DHCP servers and DNS and all that stuff, I don't think people stop and realize how powerful Microsoft Windows Server operating system is. I mean, it's all, it's all of the stuff in one operating system. Uh, Linux is the same way, but as you know, I'm a Windows guy, I'm a GUI guy, I'm familiar with Windows. So what I want to do is share my experience with you on setting up a complete uh, domain-controlled uh, environment for Windows, uh, including workstations, uh, and including Windows 7 workstations, Windows 8 maybe, and definitely Windows 10. And then showing you different things, uh, how, to, how to manage these operating systems, how you would do it in a small to mid-sized business or in the enterprise level. Now, I'm a big fan of Windows. I'm also a big fan of Linux. Doesn't mean it can't be done in Linux, but I just find it's easier to be done in Windows. Now, I'm going to use Windows Hyper-V, and I've got Hyper-V loaded on one of my enterprise level servers, the Dell R720. Now that has dual uh, Intel Xeon processors in there, only 32 gig of RAM, but it'll give us a good idea of how, how performant Hyper-V is even, even with that small amount of RAM. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to set up a couple of domain controllers on there so that we have redundancy there. Then we're going to set up workstations and I'm going to take you through the process soup to nuts beginning to end and tell you about some of the things I've learned about Windows Server along the way. And we're going to do all this on Windows Server 2019 under Hyper-V. Um, and we're going to talk about shared storage. I'm going to show you how to set up your shared storage with your Synology NAS or whatever other uh, NAS you decide to use. We will, uh, we will talk at some point about connecting up shared storage on things like uh, TrueNAS uh, and perhaps even on... Uh, Unraid. Just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Now this is not going to be on any regular type of schedule. In other words, I'm not going to put out a Windows Home Lab video every week. It might be every three weeks, four weeks, it might be once a month. But you'll know it's part of the Home Lab series because it'll say Windows Home Lab part whatever with the description next to it. That's how you'll know I'm putting out new videos on the Windows Home Lab. And just because I'm calling it the Windows Home Lab, that's because I'm running Hyper-V as my base hypervisor. Uh, but it doesn't mean I can't run Linux machines under there. It doesn't mean that we won't be spinning up a Linux server to show you just exactly how flexible Windows Server 2019 and Hyper-V are and how powerful they are. Um, now, a lot of people are under the, un under the impression that you need to pay money to run a Windows server. And uh, in a commercial environment, you do. You, you need to pay your licensing fees to Microsoft. But Microsoft has an evaluation version of all their software. And Windows Server 2019 is no different. You can load the evaluation software of Windows Server 2019 for 180 days. And then it'll start nagging you that you need to buy the software. However, you can re-enable that trial for another two times, a total of three. So for ex uh, give you a kind of example, that's about three years of use you can have in your home lab. Microsoft doesn't have any problem, as long as you're not selling this, uh, using it to, to sell a service to somebody. Microsoft does not have any problems with people running the trial version of their software in home labs. In fact, they encourage it. And I encourage you to learn it as well. Now you'll hear a lot of talk around here, oh, the VMware, no, XCPNG, no, Proxmox, no, VMware, no, Citrix, no, whatever. Learn them all. 
That's the message I'm sending out to you. Know how to use XCPNG. Know how to use Proxmox. Know how to use the uh, Linux virtualization. Know how to use Hyper-V. Know how to use VMware. It can't hurt you. And that's the beauty of setting up a home lab. So I'm going to share with you my vast knowledge of Windows servers and what I do, how I set my clients up. And But I think you'll find it interesting, educational, and informative. And that's the whole idea behind this channel. It's something I've done in the past. I kind of forgot about it, and I want to move forward because as I've gotten my lab built up now, as I've got Unky Joe's Playhouse built up now, I have lots of shared storage and lots of different flavors and options. So I can show you how those will all interact with one another. So this is the first in those series of videos. And what today's video is about is setting up an Active Directory domain controller. That is, in essence, the big kahuna of the network. It controls logins, passwords, policies on the network. Your DHCP server is going to reside on here. Your DNS is going to reside on here. Now, keep in mind, what I, well, the recommendations I'm making on my setup for, are for a small to medium business, not for a big enterprise-level client. For a big enterprise-level client, you probably want those duties put on separate servers. In other words, your Active Directory on one server, your DHCP on another, your DNS on another, etc. But today's video, again, assuming you're for the small to medium business or just for your home lab, we're going to show you soup to nuts, beginning to end, on how to set up that server. So um, this may be one of those videos you want to put on uh, when you don't have any other <laughs> disturbances around you, nothing to dis squirrel, nothing to distract you, uh, because it is a rather deep dive, and uh, I, I've been told I can get, my voice can get a little <laughs> drone on a little bit. I'll try to make it entertaining for you as we go along, and you're going to learn like I did the hard way sometimes, uh, how to correct problems you might run into. So uh, I've babbled enough, let's get the video started right now. All right, so I'm going to come over here to my Unify network, and I'm going to go to the gear icon. And what I'm going to do is create a new network for this lab. So I'm just going to click here on the Create New Network button. Now, this is going to be a corporate network, and I'm just going to call this LabNet. It's going to be corporate. I'm going to keep it on LAN 1. There's two LAN interfaces on that Unify security gateway. I'm going to keep everything on LAN 1. And I'm going to give it a VLAN ID of 20. So I'm going to give it the same VLAN ID as I am subnet. So I keep all of my routing devices, all my gateways, at a 254 address. So this is going to be the 192.168.20 network. So I'm going to give this an IP address of 254. Sorry, 254 slash 24 for the subnet. And you'll see here, it's going to list this as the gateway, 20.254. It's going to have the network broadcast IP at 255. And it's going to give us 254 IP addresses, 20.1 through 20.254. However, I'm going to turn off the DHCP server because I'm going to use, uh, in the uh, Active Directory network, I'm going to create my own DHCP server. And that should be all I need to change. And then click on Save. And then if we come over here to our devices, we'll see that it is now provisioning all the devices that need to know where that new uh, subnet and VLAN is. And as they get provisioned, they'll come out of provisioning mode and go back to normal mode. So what we've done now is we've created a 20, a VLAN ID of 20 on a subnet, uh, and we'll have that ready for our lab. All right, so now I'm over on my Dell R720 which is running Windows Server 2019. Uh, it's got, uh, and it's got Hyper-V loaded on it. And this unit has got the dual Z E5 2620 CPUs. I've got 32 gig of RAM to play around with. I've got a, a 10 gig uh, uh, Ethernet card in there, uh, even though it says gigabit 1.1. It's actually 10 gig. And it even has a NVIDIA Quadra Quadro P400 video card in there, which we're not going to be using, but it's it's nice to know that I have that available should I need it. So you've seen me do sysprep on uh, Windows Server 2019 before. If not, just go look under my videos, do a search on sysprep, and you'll be able to find one of the videos where I create a um, an image 
for both Windows 10 and for Windows Server 2019. And all I've done is imported that image and then I've renamed it. So I'm just calling it DC01, DC01, uh, or DC, yeah, DC01 Home Lab. And under the hard drive, I named that, under the virtual hard drive, I've given it the same name, DC01 Home Lab. And that is actually out on my iSCSI share. So if you want to know how to set up iSCSI shares, just go out and do a search on my videos and look for iSCSI with a Synology LAN. But there is my iSCSI share on my Synology FS1018. So now all I need to do is come in here and connect it. And then I'm going to go ahead and start the virtual machine and we'll get started on configuring it as soon as it boots up. Now, since this image has been sysprepped, it's going to go through the initial configuration. We'll have to set up a user, a password, that kind of thing. And then we'll be able to actually come back and do some other configuration on it. And actually, I did a little boo-boo. I should have changed one of the settings. Uh, but we'll fix that here in a minute. All right, so continue on with our initial configuration. We're going to click Next there. We're going to accept the license terms. And we're going to create a new super secret password for the administrator account. And even though this is in a lab, get in the habit of creating a, a good secure password. That way you don't have to come back to, you don't have to remember to come back and secure it later. Okay, now I've already done that. It's gone through its initial setup. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Alt Delete to log on. I'm going to log on with that super secret password. It'll come up and go through its initial setup because remember this was coming from a sysprepped image. And you'll see it's Windows Server 2019 evaluation. And I'm just going to click on yes here for now. I'm going to close server manager. Now I'm going to go ahead and shut this unit down because I need to check one more little tick box. And I can't do that while the server is on. So come here to the Windows uh, menu button. Go to the power icon and do a shutdown. And I'm just going to tell it other. So the one thing I forgot to do before firing this up is coming under File and Settings. And because we're on a VLAN, we need to come out under the Network Settings. And we need to turn on VLAN identification and change that VLAN to 20. That's why we created that separate network for this. Click on Apply. OK. And then we'll go ahead and start the unit up again. So we're rebooted now, so let's uh, go ahead and log in. And then we can get uh, the network set up. That's the first thing we want to do. Then log in. We may or may not get a warning about network. You'll see that we've got a little exclamation point down there. So let's go to local server under server manager. You can do this through server manager or you can do it by just coming down here. It's up to you. But you'll see right now our IPv4 address is being assigned by DHCP and there is no IPv4 address. So we're going to click on this, which will then open our Ethernet controller. So I'm going to right click on that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename that to the 10 GB. So I know that is the 10 gigabit uh, network adapter. And then we'll right click on it again, go to properties. And then double click on Internet Protocol version 4. And we're going to give it a manual IP address. And what do you think this is going to be? Let's guess. 192, 168, what, 20.1. That's right. And then our gateway which is our Unify USG, Unify Security Gateway, is 20.254. And then I'm just going to enter one of Google's DNS servers in here. We'll come back later and change that. I'm going to click OK and OK. And now it should go out and update. So if we click the Refresh button on here, we need now see that we have a 20.1 IPv4 address. So let's right click on 
the Windows button and go to a PowerShell admin command prompt. And let's just see if we can ping outside of our network. And we can, so we know it can find the gateway. And now let's see if we can actually do a address translation. And we can. Now let's see if we can ping something on our 5 subnet. Let's say Gandalf. Good, we can retrieve that too because we haven't set up any rules on the Unify Security Gateway to tell it don't allow things from the 20 VLAN to go onto the 5 VLAN. You follow me? Or to the 5 subnet. Uh, I doubt that it's going to translate the IP address though. Let's find out because it doesn't know anything about the DNS server on 5.1. So that's fine. So the other thing I want to do here under Server Manager is I want to go ahead and make sure our time zone is set right. It is. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off. What am I looking for here? Internet Explorer Enhance Security Configuration. I'm going to turn that off for administrators. Okay. And now the next thing I want to do now that I've got an IP address in it is I want to give this computer a name. So we'll click up here on computer name and go over to change. And we're going to call it uh, DC01 home lab. All right. I'm going to click on OK. And it's warning us the computer needs to restart to save these changes. So we'll go ahead and click on close and then restart now. Go ahead and click on the control alt delete icon up here. We'll go ahead and log back on. And now if all is right with the world, we should see our little yellow exclamation point should be gone on our networking. Sometimes it'll stick around though. Looks correct now. Yep, shows we got a network and we have internet access. And if we come back here to the server manager, you'll notice our server name is now correct. We got our IP address. We've got our IE and Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration is off. Our time zone is correct. So we need to launch Internet Explorer. And the first time it comes up, we're going to need to use the recommended security settings. Now I'm just going to go directly to nineite.com. I'll just type it in there. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to install Chrome and Edge now. You also have that option to install Edge now under uh, Nineite, which I feel is a better browser anyway. It has less, it's the same browser as Chrome, it's Chromium Base, uh, but it doesn't have all the fluff that uh, Google puts on there. Uh, then I like to also get 7-Zip as my compression program. Let's see, what else do I want? I want... Don't need Handbrake on this one. I do want Notepad++. I want FileZilla, just in case. WinSCP, Putty. And there's another one I want on here. Windurstat, that tells you the size of individual directories and what could be consuming a lot of space on your, your hard drive. So now that I've selected what I want, I'm going to get my Ninite. It's going to download a package installer for Ninite for those applications. I'm going to go ahead and click on Run. Then I'm going to close Internet Explorer. And we'll just let Ninite run. All right, so Ninite is now complete. We'll go ahead and close it. Then the first thing I'm going to do is open Microsoft Edge. Let it go through its initial configuration. Do -do. I'm going to go ahead and complete my setup. I like a focused browser. I'm going to continue without signing on. We're going to get the welcome screen. We'll close it. Okay, so Ninite is done. So now let's get to... Let's carry on with getting this configured to be a domain controller. All right, so we've got uh, our system initially set up. 
We've got a hard-coded IP address in there. We've named our server properly. We got all our applications loaded. Now we want to turn this into a domain controller for our home lab or labnet domain. And actually, folks, I, I made a boo-boo earlier. I called it labnet. We're going to call this home lab. And we're going to use, uh, we're going to change the name of the computer. And we're going to just change that to DC1. Because once I get done with configuring the domain, it could be a little bit confusing. So we'll just call this DC01, and we're going to need to restart that. And the other thing I'm going to do is rename everything else here so we're consistent. Now, it really doesn't matter what I call it up here, right there. Uh, we can change that later or not. All right, so let's get logged back in. And you'll see the reason I wanted to change that name. I'll explain it to you. Because I didn't want to say dc one zero one dash home lab dot home lab dot local. You follow me? Because that's what we're going to use as our domain name is home lab dot local. And that'll come into play as we get it set up next. So just leaving it set up as dc zero one is fine. I'll know that's a domain controller. You can name it anything you want to though. So let's go up to manage and we're going to add roles or features. Oh, we got to wait for the little bar to quit going across there. All right, now we can go add roles and features. We're going to click on next. We're going to do a role base or feature based install. Next. We're going to select this server, DC01. Click on next. And we're going to install Active Directory Domain Services. Now, once I've clicked that, it's going to tell you it installs all these other roles as well. So we'll click on Add Features. Now the other thing it's going to do, and we'll click on Next here, the other thing it's going to do is it's going to set up Group Policy Management as well. Okay, And then it's just warning us, it's telling us it stores information about users, computers, and other devices. It's basically a database to track all the, the user and group policies and so forth. We could also use Azure's, uh, the online version of Active Directory. That's another video for another time. So I just clicked on Next, and now I'm going to click on Install. And this is going to install, start the install. First it has to install the software, and then we'll need to pr promote this machine to a domain controller. And it's very important when you're setting up domain controllers, make sure, there are, make sure any server you set up has a hard-coded IP address. In other words, an IP address that is not going to change. It's not a good idea to be changing the IP address on your servers uh, or assigning them DHCP addresses where they could change. Now, if you want to assign a DHCP address with what's called a reservation, you could do that. That way, as long as the MAC address doesn't change on the network card, you'll get the same IP address from the DHCP server every time. It's up to you. All right, so that feature installation is done. So now we'll go ahead and click on close. But if you notice, we'll have a yellow exclamation point up here. So the next step is to, after we've got the Active Directory software installed, is to promote the server to a domain controller. So we're going to click on that little link. And what we're going to do is add a new forest, OK? And our root domain name is going to be called Home Lab. Click on Next. Ah, that's because this needs to be Home Lab dot local. Okay. Click on Next. Uh, next, it wants us to su suggest a forest functional level. Now I know it's counterintuitive. But we do keep this set to Windows Server 2016. Uh, that was so it would be backwards compatible with uh, previous versions of Windows Server as well. Um, but we'll just leave it set for, for, uh, for that setting right now. Now, this is a root password or a password for our directory services restore mode. So in case we foobar active directory at some point in the future, we'll have a recovery password. So make sure you pick a secure Super secure password, super secret, super secure password. OK, 
Okay, once you've got that in there. Also, we're going to set up DNS, and we're going to make this a global catalog server. So we click on Next. And you're going to get a little warning about a DNS uh, server cannot be created because the authority of parent zone cannot be found. That's because the DNS server doesn't exist yet. So don't worry about that. Just click on Next. And to be backwards compatible with older versions of Windows, it's going to set your NetBIOS domain name to HomeLab without the .local. So just click on Next. And these are the locations for your database, log file, and sys volume. Since we're running a small to medium business or a, just a home lab, we can keep everything on the local drive. You could create another drive or another partition just specifically to store that information. I have never found a need to do that, but, uh, you know, if you want to, and I would, I would recommend follow whatever Microsoft best practices on this. But for a little home lab, I wouldn't worry about it. Click on next, click on next, and it's going to verify the prerequisites for the domain controller operation, and everything is okay, nothing is a showstopper. We got some warnings about uh, default security settings and uh, delegation. You can ignore those for now. Let's just click on install, and we'll let this run, and we're getting the warning again, and it is starting, so we'll just let this run. Until uh, it gets done. And we can now see Windows is restarting to continue on with the installation and promotion to a domain controller. Now when it reboots, this time we should actually be logging into the actual server and domain controller. So our login screen may look a little bit different. Alright, so the machine has completed its reboot and install, so let's go ahead and log in. And you'll notice now that instead of just saying administrator for the login name, it also includes our domain name. So it's home lab backslash administrator instead of just administrator. Now go ahead and enter your super secret password. And once it logs us in, it should bring up server manager. And it did, or it has. And keep in mind, it's still updating that little bar going across the top. So if we come over here to local server, You'll see that the computer name is DC01. It's now a member of homelab.local. Our time zone is still correct. Our IP address is correct. However, you're going to see one little problem here. You should see Windows Defender Firewall not only on for private, but it should say domain here. Now, this is a known problem with Windows Server 2019, and it's simply a matter of services not starting in the right order. So I'm going to show you how to manually go out there and fix this because that could cause problems moving forward. If it continues to be a, a problem moving forward with our home lab, then we'll, I'll show you how to permanently fix it. But for now, just go to the Windows button and start typing in Services. Click on Services. And what we're looking for is no, Network Location Awareness. So that'll be before the M's, K-L, uh, M, I'm sorry, it'll be after the M's, Network Location Awareness. So if you right-click on that and choose Restart, it'll also restart the network list services. So we're going to tell it yes. All right, close that, and then come back here to Server Manager and refresh. And now it, it properly reflects the fact that we're on a domain. So that's how to temporarily fix it. Now the next thing I'm going to do so that we can, can continue on doing this via remote desktop is come to remote desktop and I'm going to write or click on that and I'm going to choose allow remote connections to this computer. Now if you go to select users you'll see that the administrator already has access so that's okay. We'll click on apply and okay. Now it should also open ports on the firewall to allow a remote desktop to come in. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on refresh here and you should see it say remote desktop is now enabled. So let's go out and test this by trying to do a remote desktop connection to to this machine. So I've got my remote desktop connection window open and I entered an IP address of 192.168.20.1 click on connect and it found it. So 
I need to change this to home lab backslash administrator. Enter our super secret password. Click on OK. Accept the security warning. Then hopefully if all went well, I should see the server manager screen. And it did. And we've got some errors down here. We're not going to worry about those for right now. But we're now connected remotely to our server. We should have DNS running. So I'm going to come over here to Windows Administrative Tools. And we should see our DNS entry. I'm going to, I'm just going to minimize this and I'm going to drag. Actually, I'm going to right click and I'm going to send this to the desktop, create a shortcut to our DNS. Now what I don't see here, I'm also going to send group policy management to the desktop. What I don't see here is our DHCP server. And the reason I don't see that is because we have not installed DHCP yet. So we're going to come back here to server manager, go up to manage, add roles and features. Next, it's going to be a role based feature. We're going to do it on DC01 and we're going to select DHCP server. We're going to choose add the features. Click on next, click on next on the next screen. And it's warning us. Remember what I told you about a static IP address? Yeah, we've already done that. So we'll click on next and click on install. Now what I like to do is reserve my first 25 IP addresses for servers and whatnot. And then if I have phones or something, I'll, I'll preserve like address 100 through 150 or 175. And then I leave addresses of 26 through 99 available for PCs, depending on your situation. But that's just how I typically set up my DHCP server. Because we'll need to do that next, as well as to authorize a DHCP server to run on the network. All right, so the DHCP server installation is complete. Now it's telling us we need to complete the configuration. So I'm going to click on that little link. And I'm going to follow the little guide. And we're going to use the following user credentials. Home lab backslash administrator. And we're going to commit those changes. Click on close. Click on close on the wizard. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh this screen here. Come up here to the little notification. And it tells us we're done. And we should see DHCP over here on the side now. And we'll see that it's activated and the online performance counters are not started on it. No big deal. So now we can come back to Windows Administrative Tools. And now we should see a DHCP icon in there. So let's right click on that. And let's send to the desktop. Create a shortcut and close out of there. Now let's get the DHCP configured. So we'll double click on the icon. And we should see that uh, I'm going to expand the window out here. We should see that we're green now, which means our scope has been authorized. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to do a new scope. It'll bring up a little wizard. I'm going to click on next. And we'll just call this Home Lab Default. Call it whatever you like. Give it whatever description you like. Click on next. So I'm going to start at 20.26 and I'm going to go through 98, or I'm sorry, 99. Click on next. I'm not going to add any exclusions right now. Click on next. Eight hours is fine. Now it's asked me, do I want to configure the uh, options such as the router, DNS server, and win settings? So yes, I do. Click on next. Now the router is going to be 192.168.20.254. Click on add. Now it's home, homelab.local and you'll notice it's put 192.168.20.1 in there automatically. That's fine. We're also going to put Google in there. Just in case, because we don't, uh, just in case 20.1 is not available for whatever reason, then it'll go to the 8.8. .8, uh, it'll allow people to go 
outside of the network to do a DNS lookup. Click on next. We're, we're not going to have any Win servers. So we'll click on next. And then it asks you, do you want to uh, activate the scope? We'll tell it yes. Click on next and finish. And now we have our address pool set aside. And you'll notice we have under our options, we have our router, DNS servers, and our domain name. So DHCP is now set up and configured. Now here's an article on the very problem that we're encountering. And this was last asked on December 21st of 2020. And that, that is domain server starts with a wrong network profile. And what they're saying here is you could try setting it to automatic delayed start. I've already tried that. It didn't make any difference. You could try appending the DNS suffix for the con uh, connection. I've tried that. It doesn't fix it. The fix is right here. You want to create a dependency for network location awareness service. Just run the following command. So in other words, this service depends on all these other services to start up before it starts. So worst case is we can type the command in here. So let's see if we can't do that. Good old, good old typing. So SC space config. Uh, NLA SVC and then a space and then depend equal uh, NSI forward slash RPC capital SS forward slash TCP IP slash DHCP slash event log slash let's see net log on. Okay, so change service config succeeded. So now what we'll do is we'll reboot the virtual machine and see if it fixed the problem. All right, so let's see if that worked. I'm hoping it will. If not, we'll need to add some more services to the dependencies, namely DNS and uh, there's another service we can add. So if you read that article along with me, there was a an additional note down at the bottom. The problem was, I think when I typed it in, for whatever reason, it did not tie the net login service to as a dependency. So now this is the second time I've rebooted the server. So now it's it's come up both times with the domain on. So I'm going to say that that is fixed. So I added that uh, dependency to the network location awareness. And uh, it seems to be coming up every time now. Now the next thing I'd like to do is go ahead and get a user, a new user set up. Um, I believe I can come into tools and active directory users and computers. And what I want to do is I want to copy the administrator account. Let's go to users. I want to copy this account and uh, set up our Adama account. And set that up with a secure password. And I want to tell it the password never expires. Now, what that should have done by copying it is given Bill Adama. We can come here to properties and go to member of. Uh, here we go. And it should be domain admins, users, enterprise admins, everything we need. So now what I want to do is I want to log out. And keep in mind, when you do this, it's, you're going to lose all your icons on your desktop and have to start fresh. 
And it says it's set to log into Home Lab, so we'll see. Login as Adama and our super secret password. And of course, it's going to create a new Windows profile for us, which is fine. There we go. So there's our new desktop. Let's see if this uh, this uh, shows us we're on our domain controller as well. Yay, it worked. All right, now you also notice remote desktop is enabled. So the next thing I want to do is disable that administrator of account, but I want to do it through remote desktop to show you that. So I'm going to go ahead and log off here. Then I'm going to go ahead and close this window and we'll come to our, we'll go out to our desktop. So I'm out here at my desktop and since my midearth.local domain does not know anything about my home lab domain and vice versa, I'm going to have to use the IP address of the server I want to connect to. So we gave that a subnet of 20. So we'll type that in here, 192.168.20.1 is the IP address. Now it's going to try and log in with Home Lab Administrator, but we're going to do Home Lab Adama instead. So let's go ahead and see if we can connect. And let's enter our super secret password. And we'll accept the certificate. And uh, if I've done my job properly here, we will now see our domain controller. Very good. There it is. Now let's go back out to uh, Active Directory Users and Computers. And we're going to lock out the administrator account now that we've created a, an account, a copy of it. So we'll come back here to homelab.local, go to Users, and the administrator account we will disable. So now that account's been disabled, nobody should be able to log in as it. And I don't need server manager to come up at login, so I'm going to tell that not to do that. And there you go. Our domain controller is created. It's up and running. We have remote access to it, even from a different subnet. And uh, we can continue on with our lab. So there you go. After some trials and tribulations, we got it set up. But, you know, if you if you hadn't run into that problem that I ran into, you might never know about it. And I don't run into that problem where the network location awareness bug rears its ugly head. It doesn't occur in every installation. So you've got to be prepared and have this knowledge either written down somewhere in your head from past experience. And this is why... It's so important that you train yourself in a lab environment before you go out into the real world and try to make this stuff happen because you will find stuff that will drive you to distraction. And this is one of those issues that has driven me to distraction over the past few years. But I am going to put a link to that article in the down in the uh, about section or the notes section, whatever the hell you want to call it, so that you guys can go out and read that article for yourself. Being that as it may, I like to share with you some of the problems you might run into just in case so that uh, you won't get frustrated and give up on it. Um, if you haven't seen on how to set up Hyper-V on a server, go go look at my videos. There's a little search bar. There's a little search uh, magnifying glass on YouTube. So if you go to the channel and you type in Hyper-V, it'll bring up every video where I've talked about Hyper-V. And I do have videos out there where I've set up Hyper-V from scratch on these enterprise level servers. So that way you have a base for moving forward and, and learning how to do the lab, uh, do the lab videos. So uh, there you go. It's all set up. We now have a primary domain controller or a first domain controller for our home lab network. That wasn't that difficult, was it? So there you go, people of the internet. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. Please give us a thumbs up down below if you liked the video. 
please leave your comments down in the comments section and we like comments from our subscribers subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and if you're so inclined to donate we take paypal patreon and the youtube join function there's a little join button down there for two dollars a month set it and forget it you don't have to worry about it a re automatically recurring membership helps a lot to keeping this channel up and with valid and relevant content for you and uh, you know so if you find you get some value out of this channel please donate it's greatly appreciated I want to I want you to know I appreciate each and every one of you and please don't forget we'll see all of you on the other side